Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio Win, and this is the new Kefine Clanar. I am unfamiliar with this brand, and to be completely honest, I had never even heard of Kefine until these showed up a few weeks ago. And at first, I was feeling a little indifferent, but then when I sat down for my first listen, I was honestly very surprised because it sounded so much better than I expected, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and go over what's included in the box talk about the design and specifications, and then we'll do a deep dive into the sound. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. As far as what's included in the box, they pretty much just provide the basics. So they give you the IEMs and cable, of course. They also include a pretty simple case and a nice assortment of ear tips. As for the price, specifications, and design, the Clanar is priced at $119, and it uses a single 14.5 millimeter Planar driver. The driver is housed in a CNC aluminum alloy shell, so it's pretty lightweight, but it does still feel quite robust. The design is very simple and understated, which is fine. I can appreciate the minimalist approach they took. The fit is very good. I had no issues with discomfort and I was able to get a good seal with the included tips. Cable is also good. It is not the softest cable I've seen at this price, but it's manageable for the most part. I haven't really had any issues with tangling and it's fairly easy to roll up and store in the case. Overall, I would say the design, the build quality is very good for this price point. Okay, let's move on to the sound. So as I had mentioned in my intro, I was very, very surprised by what I had heard on first listen with the Clanar, not only by its tuning, but by its technical performance as well. More specifically, the level of details and micro details, which really is quite impressive for this price. But let's go ahead and break the sound down first and then we'll circle back to its technical performance. So the general sound signature of the Clanar is V-shaped. So that's no surprise, of course, at this price point. But what was a surprise was just how good of a V-shaped tuning this was. Because while the mid-range does still have some of the typical issues that you get with V-shape tunings as far as its unnaturalness. It's not nearly as bad as most of the other IMs in this price range that take a similar tuning approach. And they also made sure to add just the right amount of upper mid-range energy to keep vocals from being overwhelmed by the bass. But if we look a little bit closer at the sound, starting with the bass, there is a fairly significant amount of bass energy, but it's not so much as to knock it out of balance because as I had mentioned a moment ago, you still have 
a pretty significant amount of upper mid-range energy that helps offset the low end. It also has very good bass extension, so it's not lacking any sub-bass rumble. Bass dynamics is also pretty good. Not great, but decent. And then as you move out of the mid-bass into the lower mids, there's quite a bit of energy there too in the lower mids, so that's going to introduce a pretty significant amount of warmth and richness to vocals and some instruments that land in there however you are also going to lose some of that clarity as well so there's a little bit of a trade-off there and then as you move up the graph coming out of the low mids you then have a pretty notable recess in the mid-range and this is where things can start to sound a little sucked out and a little unnatural again something pretty common with this tuning approach but it's not bad I've heard much worse and then we have a pretty steep rise into the upper mids. And we talked about that extra needed energy for vocals for it to be able to cut through and also to help balance out some of that low end energy as well. And this does that nicely. And from this point forward, moving up into the graph, that energy continues all the way through into the treble and upper treble as well. And of course, you do have a few dips and peaks, but not really that bad. There is a peak around 8K that doesn't necessarily cause peakiness or harshness, but it is notable. And there were some tracks that had maybe just a little more energy than I would have preferred. And it did have me reaching for the volume knob to turn it down just a few times. So that was something I just wanted to point out. But on the other hand, that extra treble energy also helps to reveal some extra details. And again, when you step back and you look at the signature as a whole, that treble energy really is needed to help balance everything out. And then as you move into the upper treble, there's also enough energy there to reveal some of those little micro nuances and details. In addition, it also gives you plenty of air and sparkle as well. Now, in regards to its technical performance. Again, this is where the Clanar really surprised me because it's not just good for $100, it's good for a $200 IM, in my opinion. And I have to say, it's refreshing to be able to say that and I kind of like that it's coming from a newer company. So hopefully some of these other companies that have been around for a while will take notice. So it's technical performance is really good. And the thing that stood out to me in regards to its technical performance was its detail and micro detail retrieval in the treble and upper treble. Now it is missing a little bit of that low mid range detail because of the way they tuned the transition out of the lower mids. It's just not very controlled. So we've got almost the opposite thing happening on the top end. And that increase in the technical performance in the treble is significant enough, in my opinion, to elevate the whole listening experience. Soundstage is still about average, but it does have pretty good forward depth and instrument layering. Now, as for comparisons, on a technical level, I don't think there are many sets out there that can compete with it. Maybe the S12, Z12, uh, Proxima, UMA2, but that is just on the technical side. But here's my problem, it still has a V-shaped tuning. And yes, I do like a good V-shaped tuned IM occasionally. And like I said earlier, as V-shaped tuned IMs go in this price range, this is no doubt one of the better ones that I've heard. But the reality is, is that this is not my primary tuning preference. And most of the time, I'm going to reach for something with a little more of a neutral style tuning, like the Magic One, Galileo, Aria 2, or the Kima Classic. And of course, that is a preference thing. So while the Clanar is no doubt impressive on the technical side, and while I do think it's a V-shaped I am done well, it's still not going to be my first choice all the time. That being said, I do think that if you are looking for a fun and a more engaging set to add to your collection around a hundred bucks, then this is without a doubt a set that I would highly recommend. Probably one of the best fun V-shaped tuned IMs at this price point, in my opinion. So that concludes my review of the Kefine Clanar. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you like my content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.